We got more clips from mini camps and OTAs, and today we're looking at the Carolina Panthers getting another look at Bryce Young. We're going to see what he's doing at drills and behind the scenes. But before it again, you need to click that subscribe button right now. We're going hard in the paint. We're looking at these rookies every single day this offseason from rookie camp, OTAs, mini camp, and training camp on top of your favorite veterans, seeing what they're doing at practice as well. Click that button. Stop missing out on what your favorite players are doing behind the scenes. But today we're looking at Bryce Young. I got his recent clips. We're also going to be covering everything that I could find from OTAs, voluntary workouts, and of course, mini camp. It's all right here. We're going to start off from this week's clips, too. Here it is. These are big time clips from social media from the Carolina Panthers themselves starting off. A lot of them are from them, anyways. There's him taking off. That was from the last video I did. Here's another one. The one from Deontay Johnson blew up social media yesterday or the day before. Day before, more than likely. I'm getting my days mixed up. Some of these, especially from now going forward, we've covered before. But if you missed it, it's here. It's here. Bryce Young's been looking good. He's been looking solid. Getting the ball out. And I think people are kind of sleeping on him because it's easy to look at the downside at the quarterback position because, what, 30 to 40% of them actually hit, and then some of them will hit and fall off like a Mac Jones. But when you're looking at him, you're looking at what this team's doing. we got a new coaching staff in, new offense. Things are going to be looking differently. They're, they're already trying to change things up. We have two new wide receivers, Deontay Johnson, Xavier Leggett, and... Deontay Johnson has been working hard. Deontay Johnson has been working really hard. You've been seeing a lot of workout clips come out. He's been gelling very well with Bryce Young. Creates separation, speed. He's quick, fast off the break. And I think Bryce Young's going to target him a lot. Yeah, Xavier Leggett. And a lot of people question that draft pick, but you just got to think about that draft pick a little bit more because you know what was left on the board. A lot of people look at opportunity costs and all that. And people weren't projecting him to go where it went. When I think about that draft pick of Xavier Leggett, it is a wide receiver that could end up being like a top wide receiver in the league or nothing. Like He's very boom bust. And you can look at the low or you can look at the high. I like to look cup half full with everything because, honestly, in football, we know what the downside always looks like. This is a wide receiver here that if he taps into his potential and all these players have potential that comes out, but when you really look at his potential with his size of just athletes, I mean, just look how he's built. Just look at how he's built. Look at what he did at South Carolina. Look at what he did at Senior Bowl. Look at what he did during the third practice at Senior Bowl. I believe I have it on this channel on those clips. A lot of people say he can't run routes. But the thing about that. He wasn't really asked to do so. He also had a weird career. At college with injuries. And other things. That caused him to be at college longer. It really was part of the later breakout. But the thing about that. We have draft capital now. We're on a team that's retooling. And we could definitely see where. He could fit and carve out a role. We don't need him to be a wide receiver one right now. We have Deontay Johnson for that. You have Adam Thielen as well. Two good separators. You could really use him on a lot of drag routes and short stuff, getting yards after the catch, and let him build out however they want to do it. Did we happen to mention Jonathan Brooks yet? A lot of people are sleeping on that due to the ACL. But we're looking at a running back here that once he's up to full speed, once he's on the field, good in the passing offense. Good between the tackles, good at breaking tackles, yards after contact. One of the tops in college football at that. Very explosive. Like, if he can get humming, which is very likely, he's going to be the top running back on this depth chart once he's good to go. Once he's full go. This team's going to look different. Bryce Young's going to have more opportunities for success. He's going to have more opportunities for success. He's going to have more opportunities to really play well. What we liked about him, fast mental processor, got the ball out quick, made smart decisions. This team's still retooling, rebuilding, putting things together. But they're also showing us their hand that they're willing to do that. 
that they're willing to throw the paint against the wall and see if they can make a picture. They're also saying, hey, we're going to shoot for upside. With the Xavier Leggett pick here, is it better just to shoot for that wide receiver that has the potential to be a top 10 player at their position or possibly bust? Or go after that wide receiver that could be, you know what, very likely to be a ho-hum wide receiver 40. Wide receiver 35 and just be okay. What would you rather have? A wide receiver who could, if they tap into their potential, be a difference maker or nothing? Or a wide receiver that could be just an average wide receiver that's really not really a difference maker? Out on the field. What would you rather have? What would you rather have there? Like if you had a wide receiver out there. That's just wide receiver 35. Would you be happy to have that wide receiver on your team? Would you be happy with that strategy? Would you want to play that strategy? Because once you get to that part of the draft. That's kind of what you're looking at. You're looking at those players that could be good. But you're also looking at those players who could be great but also have the downside because if they didn't have the downside, they'd be top 10 picks. Think about that along that perspective. So what strategy are you going to play? You're going to play, okay, good. I'm probably not going to miss here, but I'm probably not going to hit up here. Or are you going to try and shoot for up here with also the same chance that you could be down here? Which strategy would you want? Because if a player is likely to be up here and the floor is more up here, then they're a top 10 pick. Think about in that structure. Which way would you rather play that strategy that late in the draft? Sometimes they hit, sometimes they don't. But you know what? If you hit big, you're going to win big and turn this team around. Maybe that's what they're trying to do here. And then you're looking at Bryce Young. Fast mental processor gets the ball out with accuracy. I'm not being down on Xavier Leggett. If anything, kind of up on him with the size of just athleticism, what he could do. I know a lot of people were very down on that pick. Very down on that pick. I'm showing you something with what I think the process was here, what I like about him too, because of that size and that speed and everything with that. I think he's more than what the draft community was saying about him. I think he's got more upside than that. I think we just got to tap into that potential. And if you can do that, that upside is likely. That upside's likely. And not every player is going to do that. But that upside is nasty with this player. And if you're looking at sheer upside and you want to look at sheer upside, then that's the pick you make. But Bryce Young here can get the ball out. Fast mental processor. We're only in year two. We got some upside here. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching. Catch you on the next video.